So welcome everyone. I'm Dr. Tori Olds, and I have the delight and privilege to be here today with Dr. Stan Tatkin. You know, Stan Tatkin is a really big name in our field because he developed a form of couples therapy called a psychobiological approach to couples therapy or PACT that really revolutionized couples therapists, couples therapy. And he's really considered one of the, and it's revolutionized us therapists as well. <laughs> <laughs> Stan, you're just considered one of the top, you know, couples therapists and trainers. Um, you, I just do want to say for people watching, what was so revolutionary was before PACT um, and some similar models, couples therapy was so heady and cognitive and assuming, assuming everyone was well-regulated to do these fancy skills of communication that the, you know, they were learning in their couples therapy. And, and Stan, you know, had this insight of, hey, most of where we live is deeper down than that, is not as conscious, is more in the body and deeper parts of the brain. If we're triggered and afraid and in fight or flight, you know, all the fancy skills we learn are gonna go out the door. The work needs to go deeper, needs to be more experiential and immediate and really teaching, um, uh, th um, excuse me, couples about how to create the kind of security together so that their nervous systems can come really into sync and protect each other. That this is powerful stuff. And Stan is someone who really understands really the deeper levels of the mind. And that's what I wanted to talk with you about today. Um, and I just, you know, I, I'm very honored, first of all, to have Stan here because he's been someone who's really Im influenced me. So people who watch my channel, you know, I talk a lot about this piece I'm gonna about to bring. And Stan is one of the people 10 years ago when he was my main mentor that really helped me understand this piece. And this piece is that while we think we're doing what we're doing for rational reasons or because we thought it through or from some conscious reason, you know, most of what drives our interpretation of things, our reactions and our behaviors is really more based on things that we learned previous, based on previous experiences that you could say sort of conditioned us because we saw, let's say, that when I do this, I get hurt. So the brain just says, okay, well, I'm probably not gonna do that again, or I get rewarded when I do this. So that's really how we move through the world and how we kind of um, uh, make predictions about what's gonna happen and how we, I should respond. So I know I have lots of videos about that and it's something I'm really passionate about people understanding. But today I just wanna take that general idea and, and really hone it in and give Stan a chance um, for the remaining time that we have together um, to just kind of, talk about how does that explain or apply to the way couples struggle, you know, why they get into tricky spots together, maybe even to how they can get out of it. So I'd love to hear your thoughts on that, Stan. Sure. So let me, let me start with, uh, uh, with the things that are true about the, the human primate. Um, we're threat animals. If we do anything really, really well is we are good at scanning for threat in the environment. Uh, anything that could uh, that could hamper our survival, because that's our primary directive, is to survive as a species, as as an organism. And so, forgive us if we pick it up where uh, it may not belong in a face, in a voice, in movements, uh, in in a string of words, or the word choice. Uh, this is. Uh, how we roll. And we're memory animals. That's all we are. So everything we do is by memory. Very little is done with novelty or very little novelty, novelty is actually being processed in any given day. Most everything we do is automatic. I'd probably say about 95 to 99% of our day, fully automatic, fully memory based. Uh, we're not thinking much. We're just uh, cruising along uh, conserving energy as nature intended, uh, and really not going out of our way to do much else. That means that we automate everything. Everything that becomes that's new becomes old soon, including our partners. So we have an automatic brain that automates each other, which means we stop paying attention at a certain point. We stop paying attention. We stop being present. And we think we know our partner, but we really don't. We have an idea of our partner still. And that idea is wrapped up in a memory system that goes all the way back to childhood. And that's because a couple or a romantic twosome represents the earliest attachment relationships, the most powerful 
ones, our first ones, and that is why this is a highly, highly projective system, um, right? So uh, forgive us if we uh, don't know that this is, I'm, re I'm re-experiencing something from my mother, my father, my brother, my teacher, uh, the, the neighbor down the street, but that is the kind of memory we're dealing with. And this uh, also is backed up by a recognition system that is very, uh, very energy conserved, extremely fast, and shoots first and asks questions later. So what could possibly go wrong, right? <laughs> um, and that's what we're dealing with. It's not a personality issue. It's not an attachment issue. It's not a historical issue. It's not a trauma issue. It's a human being problem. Uh, the, uh, the human condition is such that we have a lot of features when it comes to survival. Uh, a lot of features that pertain to hunting and gathering, protecting our own, all of these things, really important features there, bugs elsewhere. Uh, for instance, uh, I compare and contrast all the time. That's important for, uh, for living out in the wild, comparing and contrasting mine. Not so good in love relationships because um, I could compare and contrast my way out of a relationship. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm always aware of what's missing right? Yeah. Very good for, for, um, for growing and in, into more complexity out in the wild yeah. and gathering, seeking out food, new lands, but very bad in love relationship because it leads to disappointment. It leads to lack of gratitude. It leads to being depressed. I don't have anything. I'm without. Somebody else has more than me, right? Yeah. So these are all, you know, features in one area, bugs in others. The automation issue is really great. Think about it. If we had to, um, if we had to use very expensive areas of our brain that do calculus and forward thinking and predictions and rotating objects, we'd never get out, the, uh, out of a corner of the room. We had to learn all over again. Yes. So this idea of automation is important for mobility, complexity, growth, moving, you know, accumulating, um, all this stuff has to be there. Yes. But we have to be smart. And uh, that's, that's, uh, that's just some of the problems, right? There's more. Uh, uh, communication, digital communication is horrible. Even on a good day, we think we understand each other. Most of the time we don't. I think I'm being clear. I'm not. I think I understand what you said. I don't. Um, I, we, we approximate each other, which is a dangerous thing, but it's the only thing we have. We never really ever on the same page, two different minds, right? So we approximate each other. And if we're really sloppy, which we are, uh, and really lazy, we're gonna make mistakes. And we're going to uh, take a ball and run with it because our appraisal systems are based on misinformation. And so our perceptions are like funhouse mirrors. I think I see an angry face, but no, um, you're neutral, but I'm angry. Um, uh, our memory isn't what we think. We try to remember things accurately, but it's never accurate. Uh, and so you have two people arguing over what happened, who did what, when, where, and they're both wrong. So we have this slippery slope. Um, this ground that, that is moving all the time where we can't really know what the truth is exactly because there are too many moving parts and too many errors that we make. But that's important for the therapist too because the therapist is also um, is exposed to these very same errors. That's why we have to work in a certain way and not be too sure not be too sure, always be curious, always cross check, corroborate information, dig deeper and look for, uh, for evidence. Um, that's something in our field we have to do, move on proof, evidence, um, and we check our hunches by testing and retesting, but we don't go with our gut only. We go with our that's gut and our mind. Yes, right? that's interesting. I really, I think I just learned something there, Stan, because you're saying, you know, it's not just attachment and trauma. You said not attachment trauma. I said, even though you focus on all those things also, yeah. and there's a big part of your theory, you're saying even before we have that conversation, which is an important conversation, this is just our basic learning how to be a hunter and gatherer and learn it exist in the world and figure out and use our resources in our brain. It's just like basic stuff is, is already setting us up to have, you know, miscalculations and miscommunications and negativity bias you know, all that's just all immediately before we even have any trauma, <laughs> you know, in our if, nervous system. If we really just grounded ourselves in the truth about human primates, we would be comforted by the knowledge that all of us are aggressive, warlike, fickle, moody, impulsive, opportunistic, um, 
Uh, we're influenceable easily by a group. Uh, I'm affiliated this way, and now I'm affiliated that way. Uh, we are um, racist and xenophobic. Uh, this is the human uh, uh, part of us that we don't like to accept, but we do, we, you know, we ignore it at our own, at our own peril. The only thing that, that makes us better across civilization have been principles of governance, rules, mm -hmm. religious laws, right? Uh, that keeps us norms, right? That keeps us uh, in check so we can get along with others. Otherwise we'll go to war or we do something that's terrible. Same thing with a two person system. They're the smallest unit of a society or civilization. They too have to have a shared purpose. Why are we doing this? Can't be love, it's gotta be something that's good for the long run. What's our shared vision? Where are we going? Where we want to go? Why? Um, and then uh, shared principles of governance. What are we going to put in place? Two different people, animals moving through time that protects us from each other. Mm. People do those three things. Um, uh, that's really packed. Mm. Uh, packed is secure functioning, two person system, shared power, shared authority, operating according to principles of fairness, justice, mutual sensitivity, collaboration, cooperation. That's the goal. That's what has to be. Otherwise people won't, won't survive or they won't. It's, it's, it's work for adults. This isn't child's play. It's just, as, as, yeah. as I hear you saying, it's a serious thing. It's like setting up a system of government or setting up anything. Right. This really has to be thought through. And there's two pieces I'm really hearing you on the one of like, what are our norms? What is our plan? What's our mission? And what's our norms? How, let's agree on this collaboratively. But then also um, the understanding about, you know, like you said, this is how our brain is. Well, it could seem kind of like, I don't know, negativistic or kind of down, like down on the human. I mean, yeah. I know you, it's so compassionate, you know, it's like so compassionate. And if we can, um, there's a, just even intellectually getting that, like, hey, we're do all doing our best, yeah. but here's the way we're set up to, you know, get into these problems. I'm gonna be easily threatened. And when I'm threatened, I'm going to lose all of these capacities and et cetera, that there's such a, you know, deep compassion for like the reason we need these versus like, because we're bad and we need to have control. It's like, no, because we evolve this way we evolve. And, we're really, and we're trying our best with the best intentions, but we're animals. Like, I love that. We're animals. Mm. <laughs> in, in couples, we have a saying, no angels, no devils. Where there's one, there's no. always the other. Right. Um, and so it's a system. Yes. that's reacting to itself yeah. uh, and therefore we have to think of it that way that people aren't doing things mostly aren't doing them purposely they're doing them automatically and reflexively according to memory with yeah. lightning speed recognition systems that are faster than thought yes right. uh, we don't realize and this is why we digitally uh, uh, record couples so we could do what's called frame analysis look frame by frame and to see how people are reacting at every micro moment because real time is way too fast. Um, we're very good at processing uh, threat cues and making our own interpretations, narratives, which are always self-affirming, uh, right? Self-serving. That's how we roll. Uh, it's not good or bad, right or wrong. The only thing that saves us is, uh, is having a real shared idea of what we're going to do and what we're not going to do under any circumstances any circumstances. These principles are considered perfect, even though humans are not. When we have these principles, like we protect each other in public and private at all times, that's a principle, right? Mm -hmm. We do that. If one of us fails, the only thing that person can do is, is just kneel and beg forgiveness and make it right. That's all. That's governing. When you have agreements, prior agreements, prior permission, looking forward, what could possibly go wrong. And then you both want that thing, even though it's going to be the hardest thing to do, right? You're picking the, the what, what are the, what's going to be the best thing to do in these situations, the right thing to do when it's the hardest. And we're going to hold each other to it. That's how two people can make each other awesome. That's oh, how two people can, uh, can uh, make each other grow up, be more, be better, be wiser, smarter and be ex exemplars for their kids, right? Because they're developing an ethos. They're developing, this is what we do in the social emotional world. This is what we don't do. And if we fail, we fall on our swords, make amends, 
uh, make it right if necessary, and then move forward. Yes. That's very inspirational to me, Stan. I really appreciate you taking the time to talk with and, us. About and to that. me too, yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. yes, I know you've dedicated your whole life to this. And I'm just thinking a listener might be like, wow, this is really profound stuff. And I wish we could talk for another hour, but Stan has many books and is your website stantatkin.com, right? Um, it is. It'll 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 take people to the Pact Institute anyway. Pact Institute. Okay, Pact Institute. Um, and so it's the Pact Institute. And there people can find retreats that mm-hmm. uh, my my wife, partner, um, my love of my life, uh, Dr. Oh, Tracy Sackman and I do uh, all yeah, over yeah. the world and trainings that yeah. we do all over the world we're doing right now. Uh, if you're interested in uh, in what we do. So thank you so much, Stan, for being with us today. <laughs> Take care. Thank you so much for watching. If you found this video helpful, you can help me out by liking and subscribing. Or if you're a therapist and are interested in training with me while earning online CEUs, feel free to visit my website, toriolds.com. Flowers in the garden mm-hmm.